Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I have another video on Tesla and it's the launch of their own solar power inverter. My biggest question is, and yours should be too, is it any good? But before I dive in, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in going solar or getting a battery backup system, then visit us online by using the link in the description below. We have some great promotions going on right now in the first of the year that you're not going to want to miss out on. So check out that link in the description below. So Tesla has been offering its own solar power solution since the acquisition of Solar City back in 2016. One of Musk's strategies was to differentiate Tesla from the solar market by offering consumers different products. The automaker tried to make its own solar panels, but it didn't work out and they ultimately partnered with Panasonic, which just last year they ended that partnership in favor of one with Qcell. Regardless, Tesla has had success with its Powerwall, a home battery backup solution that matches well with residential solar systems. I've done several videos comparing the Tesla Powerwall to, to other battery backup solutions on the market. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check one of them out. And let's not forget that Tesla has appeared to have some success, I'll say some, with their solar roof tiles version three, the solar glass, which I did a video on that when it was released and I'm planning on doing an updated video on the solar glass version three as new information has become available since I did that video. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to check it out. So it really comes as no surprise that Tesla would use its expertise in power electronics for their electric vehicles and apply that to a solar inverter. As of this video, there is some bare bone information available on this Tesla solar inverter, but I do want to talk about what I do know and compare it to the two leading manufacturers in the industry, and that's Enphase Energy and Solar Edge. The key details, the unit is rumored to be built on the Powerwall 2 technology, so that's cool. It'll have Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and cellular connectivity for over the air updates. That's not really impressive, but you know, every system kind of has that nowadays. It will be fully integrated with Tesla's app. I mean, that makes sense, but here's a shocker. It'll only come in two sizes. We're looking at a 3.8 kilowatt and a 7.6 kilowatt. Now diving deeper into this information, which I did provide a link in the description below to one of the articles that has more of this information available. So if you want to check that out, be sure to. I did try and scour the internet for more information, but kind of came up empty handed. So if you're able to find anything, please leave a comment with an article. That'd really be appreciative. Now the inverter is supposedly going to feature a 97.5% efficiency. Efficiency has a lot of different ratings and there's this CEC and then there's some other ones, but I, I just know it's 97.5 which if this is true, it is better than the current inverters that they're using from Delta because those have a 97% efficiency rating. Now the 3.8 unit will have two MPPTs and the 7.6 unit will have four MPPTs. Now I wanna give you a quick lesson on maximum power point trackers or MPPT. Every string inverter has an MPPT. They have at least two. Now before optimizers and microinverters, solar installers had to design around the array orientation. You didn't want to have five solar panels facing south connected to two solar panels facing east because these lower producing panels would bring down the higher producing panels. So to avoid this, Installers would put the five facing south on one MPPT and the two facing east on another. This ensured that you got the maximum power from the solar array, well, both arrays, throughout the entire day. Now, technology has evolved over the years and optimizers became more common along with the advancement of microinverters, which pretty much made this type of 
installation method obsolete because optimizer and microinverters allow solar panels to act independently of one another. So if one is underproducing due to shade or orientation or whatever, it really doesn't affect the rest of them. Now, at first glance, it doesn't appear as though the Tesla solar inverter has optimizers. It does say it's rapid shutdown compliant, but there are other components required for rapid shutdown compliancy. And it's clearly not microinverter, so it kind of looks like Tesla's going backwards, and it isn't really bringing anything new to the table, I guess, to compete with Enphase Energy or Solar Edge's technology. Plus, there's no mention of module level monitoring like Enphase and Solar Edge both offer. This is a huge feature for installers like myself and for you as a consumer because if a panel goes bad, it takes a couple hours with technicians, with, with two mind you, to find it on the string inverter whereas with module level monitoring, we actually can see the panel through the system like, hey, this panel's bad. We just send one tech to go check it out. Is it the micro or optimizer? Is it the panel? We can troubleshoot just that one panel and figure it out where we have to send two people to service an older string inverter system that's using MPPT tracking without optimizers or module level monitoring. Now moving on to the warranty, this is where things kind of get weird because they're offering a 12 and a half year warranty. I, I have no idea why Tesla is doing this. I've never seen an inverter with a half a year warranty, but maybe they're doing it because it appears better than Solar Edge's standard warranty, which their inverters come with a standard 12 year warranty. But in most cases, most companies like ourselves, we extend that to 25 years. So it's not better. I, I don't know. And Enphase's standard warranty is 25 years. There's no extension of that, but you get 25 years. So either way, I, I guess it's a good warranty, but it's not better than what Solar Edge and Enphase technically offer. This is really all the information I have, which is good, I guess. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And right now, I would say this isn't something worth going and getting a Tesla solar system for because it's really not groundbreaking. And I kind of feel like you're missing out on some key features that you know, some of these leading companies have brought to the market and kind of standardized. And plus, I don't even know when this unit's going to get released. So yeah, well, that's it for this video. If you're looking to go solar now, it's really a great time. We have some amazing promotions going on thanks to our partnership with QCell and Enphase Energy. So if you're one of these homeowners in our area of Southern California, visit us online at pacificsuntech.com or use that link in the description below. And hey, while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.